up guys welcome back to cool Fred's Beamer Tech uh, my name is cool Fred and today we're going into the next episode of the E60 uh, the 535 so for you guys who are new to the channel um, cool Fred's Beamer Tech is a video vlog series I've been doing for a little bit now that just highlights me working on uh, BMWs in general on this channel but uh, I have another channel where I work on um, other uh, all other vehicles, including some of my own, and that's Cool Fresh Garage. So this is going to into episode two of uh, working on the E60. So the last time on the E60, uh, I scanned it, found out I had some O2 sensor codes. Um, we usually refer to those as fault codes. But I had some O2 sensor codes on bank bank one, the before cat O2 sensor. So this is a 535i. Well, actually, it's an XI. It's an all-wheel drive 5 series 2010. The last year, that body style. Um, so had the lean mixture. Uh, also had lean mixture codes too, in addition to the O2 sensor fault. So I recommend it to um, the client, which is a uh, Pretty much a a client I've been dealing with for a while, for maybe over eight years. So been working on his car for a while, um, on and off. Um, so I recommended that he buy two of the O2 sensors because um, this is a twin turbo inline six. He has a front and a rear, which we refer to as bank one and bank two. So um, actually got four O2 sensors. He got. You got two before before the catalytic converter and two after the catalytic converter. So before I talk about the parts that we're gonna use to fix the car, um, I don't. I guess I did mention briefly about the the lean mixture code. So had a lean mixture code that was actually on bank one, but I smoke tested the vehicle with my smoke machine uh, that I brought from uh, the shop that I work at. Uh, brought home a smoke machine hooked it up and i found where the leak was coming from but uh where i found it was coming from was uh, a little bit area than i thought that it was going to be i did have this type of leak before but uh it's actually the rear turbocharger the bank two uh turbocharger for cylinders four through six it was leaking at the uh, intake inlet pipe so um i'm gonna show you guys the description of that so uh just want to thank you guys for checking out my videos in the channel and uh if you uh, like any of my videos please like the videos and subscribe to the channel um if you want to see uh me repair cars <laughs> all right so here we go um so these are the parts that we got for the e60 so um i guess i'll start with the o2 sensors so this one right here is the rear O2 sensor for cylinders uh, four through six. And this is the front O2 sensor for cylinders uh, one through three. So the front one will be referred to in BMW terms as bank one. And the rear one on cylinders four through six will be referred to as bank two. So um, these right, we decided to go with the manufacturer brand on these which uh the original o2 sensors are made from botch but we ordered these from fcp euro uh it just seemed like it was a little bit um just a little bit better deal a little bit better savings to go with the manufacturer brand versus uh the dealer part so the dealer part is probably over a hundred and something dollars like, or like an extra one one twenty five a pop so now we did have to go to the dealership and get this stuff here which i'm gonna talk about in a second all right so this right here is the front o2 sensor on cylinders uh one through three and this is the longest one the other one is a little bit shorter so uh this is you know like like i said it's from botch but it's pretty much the same or similar it's made by the same manufacturer but it's pretty much the same thing that you would get in the white BMW box without the BMW price, I guess. So, 
Um, so, so I've been using a manufactured brand on some vehicles for a while now, and I haven't really had any any problems. Um, and and that's that. So, uh, I mean, it, it's just like if you if you got a car that's you know 10 11 years old it just it just kind of makes sense you know car that I, well, I think that's a 2010 so it's almost 13 years old so i mean it just kind of you know you just um debate whether you want to spend the extra money or, or or no but i mean to me if it's going to give you the same result and the same if it's the quality is just as good because um I trust buying the manufacturer brand versus going to uh, AutoZone and Advanced Auto Parts or any other place and, and getting like something that I don't know that's in like the Duralast box or the BWD box. I'm not saying that those are, you know, bad parts, but just for BMW, they just seem to, to don't work out. So, all right. So, um... The next thing is, let me put that to the side. So basically, uh, what I found out that exactly that's leaking is this seal right here on the parts diagram, which is in this pipe right here. So uh, we have to try to get this pipe loose or uh, try to remove it slightly or get it loose so we can get that seal in there. So that's the uh, rear bank to uh, inlet pipe that goes from the airbox to the turbo and also there's a connection for the crankcase vent pipe which I removed that pipe right there that's just sitting on this on my workbench so this right here is the seal that's causing our leak so I gotta get that replaced and then also this right here is the air filter so I mentioned that the or the air filter that was in there. I'm not sure if it's the original. I'm sure it's been replaced once. Maybe on the warranty maintenance or whatever. But uh, So the other one was just kind of crumbling apart. And so this is the new one that we're going to put in there. So this should help out. Especially once I get that leak fixed. I'm going to reset the adaptations. And hopefully uh, the vehicle will run and drive better. So pretty much the goal of the customer um, is to, you know, get the check into light to to go out. So uh, the two main codes is the O2 sensor codes and also uh, the lean mixture code. So we're going to be taking care of that. Um, so as far as the price of the parts, I want to say those O2 sensors were somewhere like one of them was more expensive than the other one. I want to say they were somewhere around, I guess, one twenty-five to one hundred thirty dollars a piece, something like that. Um, this right here, uh, this is about fifty dollars for this seal, for this rubber seal. So, and the air filter is like nineteen. So, so that's the price of the parts as far as the. If you guys want to know the part number for this seal, um, that's my son in the house just making all kind of noises. So y'all probably hear him on the, on the video, but it's all good. So that seal is number 10 on this diagram. And this is the part number down here. So that 1371, 756-8029, that's the part number. and. The air filter is usually a little bit, I mean, you just go down to your local dealership and get that, but that's the part number to that. If you guys are interested in the part number for this car on the front um, O2 sensor, uh, a lot of times botch and a lot of stuff they sell on uh, FCP Euro, um, it'll have, on the website, they will have the BMW number and the I think that la those last numbers on the bottom of the BMW number, but a lot of times, uh, like let's say botch, they use this five-digit number that seventeen four four seven. So that's the front O2 sensor, and the rear one. Hold on, let's try. 
Okay. I, I told you guys wrong before. The one that I took out of the box was actually the rear O2 sensor 4 through 6. It really didn't make a difference because uh, they look up almost about the same except the the front one is just a little bit longer than the rear one because the wire harness is closer to the front where it connect the connector so but it did, I mean I just 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 trying to give y'all a sense of what it looks like compared to the one that's on the car but I took the rear one out of the box so we can look at it but the part number to the rear is 17202 and of course, uh, if you get the BMW number and reference it over, that's what you'll come up with. Now, um, I did have the BMW number somewhere, uh, but don't quote me on if this zero, because uh, it would it would be like a 13 dash something. But if the rest of the part number, I'm not sure if it's zero. 258017 so I'm, I'm not sure so uh, I know these are just the box numbers so. all right so real quick um, as I was mentioning on this seal right here when I looked up the repair instructions they recommend well I'm not gonna say they recommend the instructions say that's what the instructions say and the only uh, instructions I could really find was not particularly uh this seal i couldn't find anything for this seal but the only logical thing to be able to re to replace the seal is you have to remove that that rear intake pipe uh for the bank to turbo from there to the um the air box so that goes around the back of the engine and attaches to the cylinder head so um so i'm gonna show you guys what i'm gonna try to do my plan of attack uh, I may have to remove uh, a few more things, but basically, long story short, um, this is what I should have been trying to get around to. But it says to remove the catalytic, not the catalytic converter. It says remove the transmission. So uh, I want to say that I've done this one time before, a long time ago. Um, but that, that's what it recommends to remove the transmission to access and get that pipe out of the way. Uh, so we can replace this seal so let's see what I can come up okay so from here uh, I'm gonna go out to the car let you guys know uh, what I got going on so far and my plan of attack to try to get all right this. so coming out to the car uh, so I know that the uh, F10 has a rear partition trim back there or partition uh, cover it's not really a partition cover, but it's like the microfilter housing that extends out. So I was able to take that piece out. So I got that out so far. And so far I can kind of see. I got access to the back side. So uh, this is one screw here and another one's over there. So uh, I'm gonna try to get those removed. And then uh, I've already, I'm already in the process of uh, getting these O2 sensors out. So that's the front one, the rear one. Let me see. So this is the rear one. Well, actually, this is the. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is the front one. I put a one there. And I put a two on this other one here, just so I can keep up with them. That's my phone going off there because I got a camera above my house or in my driveway and I'm out here doing a whole lot of movement so it keeps uh, alerting me but I'm only going to be out here for just a little bit tonight I'm just trying to get started um, so basically those two sensors kind of run around along the back side of the engine I've already taken this crankcase pipe out. It goes from here to there. Actually, it goes right here to over there. And then you can kind of see uh, right here. So that's the rear O2 sensor there where it goes down through there. And then the front one 
goes along here. So, I took the wheel off the other day. I got a lot of stuff from under the bottom out. Uh, so, I should be able to get access down in there. Um, but I guess my other concern is my other concern is uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to take one of the catalytic converters out just because of the uh, that pipe um, I showed some stuff on a video the other day so that's one of the sensors there I guess the one that we can see uh, that would be bank one and the second one kind of is at a different angle right there so that would be bank two so they're accessible just got to get some special wrenches and stuff in there uh, but it's just while I'm in there I'm trying to uh, get the best trying to see what I can do to uh, trying to see what I can do to get the uh, to get that intake pipe seal replaced so kind of brainstorming on that so because I really don't want to take the transmission out just to get that but I'm sure I can get it another way so worst case scenario I'll probably have to take the catalytic converters out or at least the rear one I don't know but to get the rear one out I'm have to take the front one out I don't know uh, it's been a long time since I've done uh, work on the turbochargers on one of these that's back at the dealership uh, and majority when they was under warranty I, I've replaced a few of these customer pay at the dealership turbochargers uh, so that's that so I'm going to go ahead and see what I can get going and I'll just uh, give you guys like an overview and then uh, at the end probably get a chance to clear the faults and go test drive it.